and welcome to another edition of Link Online, actually our 12th edition, produced the week just about before Dominica's Carnival. Everything is hot about Carnival. Yeah, you'll notice my shirt, trying to be in the, with the vibes as they say. And um, yeah, it's heating up, especially Calypso, and quite frankly, even the weather is heating up. And that follows more than a month about six weeks of almost every day heavy rainfall but finally that seems to have broken the last two days very bright sunlight so things are getting really set for the hot carnival on this edition we're starting with the hottest subject in terms of comments and conversation and social media back and forth the issue of the former prime minister of St. Kitts carrying a diplomatic passport for Dominica. Hmm. We'll hear some of the latest information and comments. We're also going to talk about another controversial point that's been active for maybe a couple of weeks now and that of a Dominica flagged uh, ship that was caught in fact offloading supplies of oil to North Korea and of course that's a no-no. There are all kind of sanctions applied right now to North Korea considered the bad guy because of its insistence on developing nuclear weapons. We've also got the latest controversy every year, carnival time, calypso time, there's controversy about calypso. We talk about that one, you can guess what it is about, those of you in Dominica. And also talk about a young calypsonian lady who had an excellent song, especially lyrically. She didn't quite make it through to the semi-finals pass, but worthwhile commenting. Then the other big issue this week especially were the distribution of financial grants, money, Lazarus, to a lot of farmers of Dominica. You think that's only good but some people thought it's not so good and you'll hear some of the negative comments, some of which may have had a little basis. Finally, we'll talk about our private sector, DIC, some major happenings coming up um, towards the end of this month. We'll talk about that. Okay, our first break and then we'll be right back. Welcome to Smart. Mom, what is Smart? It's a nice shop for smart shoppers. Why is it for smart shoppers? Look at these sheets. Look at these yogurts. It's so hard to get them all in one place, but Esmat has them all. Here is this Cadbury chocolate. It's on sale. Do you want it? Yes. We can take some more for later too. Wow, Mom, that is smart. Shop smarter than smart. Right, and. I must take this opportunity really to thank our sponsors of this program. Without them, we couldn't afford this nice studio and the fabulous work of the CBN production team. Everything costs money, so we have to pay. But thanks to sponsors, the cost to link online is a little less than, um, than it would otherwise be. But thank you, viewers, for your very kind comments about this program, and we'll try to keep up to the standard that you're beginning to expect every time. Yeah, our first item for comment, the Denzel Douglas controversy. Denzel Douglas, as we indicated earlier, was a former Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. In fact, he was Prime Minister there for about 20 years. He lost the last election in St. Kitts. And then it emerged about a year, year and a half after that he had a diplomatic passport from another country. At first there was no indication which country. It surprised a lot of people to find out when actually photographs of the passport, including number and so on, started to appear um, easily about four months ago of, of a passport held by, um, by Mr. Douglas. And, um, and even shortly thereafter, there were suggestions that the Prime Minister of St. Kitts also had a Dominican <laughs> diplomatic passport. And we wondered, you know, are these things figment of people's imagination? Why are they postulating this and so on? Fascinating subject, the fact that um, this gentleman, the Honorable Denzel Douglas, has indeed a 
passport. Now, he was claiming at the last parliamentary sitting that while he did have the diplomatic passport, he did not swear any allegiance to any other country than, of course, what he has done for St. Kitts. So, and as I was saying, he was thrown out of um, thrown out of Parliament because he got a little rude in his interaction with the with the Speaker, and he was asked to quit Parliament. Later on, it might have been just a couple of days, the government's Attorney General announced that he would be taking the matter of his of his sitting in Parliament would be taken up because under the Constitution or, or the other laws about the electoral process he was not in fact entitled to sit in parliament by virtue of the other passport so with the outcome of that now in terms of comment one would say why would someone from another caribbean country ask for a diplomatic passport from another and why would that other country grant that passport quick background is that mr douglas was long accustomed to having a passport a diplomatic passport it was removed um, after he left office, and that does not necessarily practice. Normally, it may continue for some years after, but there was bitterness between the two political parties at the time of the election. So his words were withdrawn. He was uncomfortable with that and asked his apparent friend, the Prime Minister of Dominica, whether uh, he could claim uh, a case could be made for him to have a diplomatic passport for Dominica, and he would presumably represent the interests of Dominica. Um, as a, a known figure in terms of, of, of the political regime in the, in the Caribbean. And presumably on the basis of that, um, he was granted a passport. A case could be made either way, but um, it's controversial because it hasn't happened before. But um, whether it deserves to be controversial, we'll have to wait and see. I say this because Mr. the Honorable Douglas's lawyer is none other than that Dominican esteemed uh, lawyer, senior counsel Tony Astefan, who is making a case in the preliminary um, um, projections out there that in fact Mr. Douglas did not swear allegiance to anything. Um, so what was involved in him assuming that Dominica diplomatic passport, details will have to come out at some stage in the courts of St. Kitts. Okay, moving quickly along, the next major issue, that of the Dominican flagship that was caught by camera, satellite camera, in fact, offloading oil to a North Korean ship. Now, under the present sanctions regime against North Korea, which, by the way, has a lot of sanctions against it because of its insistence on trying to get nuclear weapons, and the whole world dead against that. Um, so, uh, there have been sanctions, one of which is you can't trade with them as per normal. Yet, this ship was seen, caught by satellite, actually offloading stuff. At least that's what is alleged. And when the facts about the ship come out, it turns out that that ship carried a Dominica flag. Also turns out that it's not a flag really issued by the Dominica government, but that particular operation of of giving of flagging ships when they apply and pay the requisite fees of a country had been delegated to a company in um, in the United States and that was since the days of the Edison James government um, why it was done is not quite clear they could have made a case that um, that it was problematic for them to do it in Dominica so they wanted to outsource it or what seems to be more the real case was that because the government needed money at the time, when you look at the dates involved, it was close to election time, and the fact that the contract apparently was a very sweet one in the interest of the American company, maybe a deal was made to make sure we got some, that is the then ruling party, the UWP, to get some financing for the upcoming campaign through that special deal. But the bottom line is that Dominica could be a little embarrassed, but most people, intelligent people, serious people, understand how this thing works and realize the Dominica government is not involved in, in allowing this particular ship, um, you know, to, to, to go against the sanctions of the United Nations. But it's a political issue, both sides accusing each other of wrongdoing, and we'll have to wait, see how it ultimately plays out. But I don't think there's really going to be too much um, bad, um, bad effects on the 
Dominica's image or its government uh, when all the facts are known. Okay, our second break and we'll get ready for Calypso action, Calypso controversy. Well, there's never a Calypso season without controversy. This time, it's perhaps a bigger one than usual, with a couple of casualties falling out. I am, of course, talking to about the decision by the Dominica Festivals Commission, the main organizers for the little carnival we're having this year. Um, all the, the events except the Calypso show, which is controlled entirely by the Dominica Calypso Association. The Festival Commission were having an event on a Friday evening, which was going to include some of the main calypsos of the season. That would have included Dice's popular looting. Unfortunately, it was controversial because the song is about the looting that went on um, in Dominica. Controversial because it was extreme, it went on very long, and there's still a lot of bad fallout. In Dice Calypso, there are a couple of lines when he says he's not condoning looting, but a lot of the Calypso suggests, oh, it can be defended and so on. So it was probably in order that the DFA looked at the issue again and wondered whether it was appropriate for a song that seemingly okays looting, seemingly okays um, looting, to be on the public platform in an event organized by the Dominica government, mainly the DDA is part of the Dominica government, where all the authorities, and of course a lot of private people, have been condemning the outrageous looting that took place um, after uh, Hurricane Maria. But controversial, I say, and, 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 and with a look in a way, but they should have kept in mind also that any time a song is banned, it just makes it more popular, everybody wants to find out what exactly was in it that they required banning and so on. So you have to think twice on that. But quite frankly, I understand the, and sympathize with the view of the DDA and, you know, and I think their, their, their action was appropriate. Interestingly, because they had invited um, Dice to sing and now were withdrawing the offer, they offered to pay him what they were going to pay him if he sang the song. I thought that was generous on their part, but, but very fair. Of course, it would be controversial because Dice does have a lot of fans and there are unfortunately a lot of people who, who defend um, looting. There are a lot of people that defend looting. Not by any means the majority of our people. The majority of Dominicans are a law abi abiding and absolutely condemned. There is no defense for looting, especially the type of looting that occurred then. It was not food and so on that was being taken as again in his Calypso died, died, died seems to stress on. It was the other things, a lot of other big items, household items, you know, fridges, refrigerated TVs, all kind of, you know, stuff they could get their hands on. In a couple of instances, even broke into homes to, to steal, which is what looting really is. We cannot accept that, and it must be condemned. Um, of course, the big finals of the Calypso competition comes off Friday, um, sorry, Saturday evening. That um, would have been the, the 10th, I believe. It's Saturday the 10th of, um, of February, just a little more than a week coming up. And Dice, as I say, probably stands an even better chance with his song because that controversy has very much worked in his favor. But we have to wait and see because the judges' decisions have been a little surprising in some respects. I was surprised that um, Jamadi, who had a very nice song about Maria too, did not make it to the finals. 
and a couple of others and some who, 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 who made it surprised me a bit but that's the judge's decision and you know one was not going to quarrel with that but I will mention though before I leave that issue to talk about a lady who didn't even make it I think past the semi-finals a young lady Calypsonian um, by the name of Alicia Ducre who sang a song the lyrics were just excellent it was about reunion what she called the reunion train that would have been in effect this year and in a big effect if, if, if you know Maria hadn't struck but all this has been you know down down size considerably now but she was talking about in her calypso there's a reunion trade and who can come aboard people were talking about honesty to, people talking about hard work people talking about truth and so on the negative things those who want to malpale people those who want to spread lies those who want you know to spoil the image of Dominica these people are not welcome on the train but it was said in a beautiful fashion with all the right words and I was personally a little disappointed that she didn't make it to the finals but maybe next year will be her year so much for Calypso and believe me though all the Calypsos are pretty good this year uh, my see all I mean you know those that made the semi-finals and finals it's, it's really been top gun and I commend our Calypsonians every year they, they, they seem to come up with better and better stuff okay um, our final break now and then we'll be back with money for farmers Yes, the hot subject in Dominica this week has been the grants, the monetary grants allocated to most, well, a fair proportion of our farmers in Dominica. These grants um, amounted to 10,000 for some people, 6,000 for others, 3,000 for yet other smaller farmers, and $1,000 given to people, perhaps because they were just token in agriculture, but, you know, they had their foot in it. So the government wanted to say, well, we appreciate at least you have a foot in it and maybe with the 1,000 it will show you can do more and, and we're appreciating what you've done so far. But needless to say, anything to do with money <laughs> being given out free um, is controversial. And there were suggestions that although it's a program that was funded by the World Food Organization for the most part, that some of the way the money was allocated was not done prop properly. Now, here you're seeing the lineup. I think that was at the aid bank where those in the southern area of Dominica had to sign up to get their, to get their checks, so to speak. I, I gather they didn't know whether they were getting 10,000 or 6,000 or 3,000 or whether they were getting a check at all. And that shows a little lack of planning. So you had all kinds of people there lining up and only when they reached the desk to ask if their name is on the list, they find out, no, that list could have been published or stuck up somewhere, you know, that people can, can check that earlier. But the suggestion, especially by the UWP, is that oh, the list was not properly compiled. The extension officers uh, made a proper list, but then the political people got involved and, and changed names and, uh, and so on. Uh, I don't know what the evidence of that, but that's the kind of talk, in a way, you would, uh, would expect. What the government did say, though, that anybody who feels they have not been rightly allocated a fair amount or they have not been allocated anything and they feel there is evidence that they are indeed agricultural farmers um, to a large extent they have a right to appeal to the Ministry of Agriculture and I thought that was very um, very amicable uh, a good gesture by the government so so some of the errors that and sometimes in these long lists and there's bureaucracy involved whether we like it or not there is bureaucracy involved um, mistakes happen so at least there's a chance that it can be corrected. The key thing though, the argument that I had much sympathy with was the one that, okay, so you're paying out all this money to the farmers. How are we sure that they're going to put it where they should in terms of building up their farms and, and, and their quality and so on? 
Now, to some extent, that is true. I mean, the, mon the money is being handed out, and there's no criteria for in terms of how you're going to, to use that money. Um, I feel more could be done in that respect, but I understand the argument says, look, the farmers have already waited close to five months to get a little cash injection so they can really do something. Are you going to wait another two months to get the so-called experts to come out and talk to each farmer and get an idea of what he's done and what it's possible that he could be doing and this sort of thing? No, I think, I think the reasoning on the government side was, look, the farmers need help. They, like all of us, suffered through Maria, but they're the ones that need the money fairly quickly to get things going in a substantial way. And in a way, we're rewarding them for the hard work they've been doing for many years. So let's give them that money. Um, not the best plan, but I understand the logic there. And, and you know, quite frankly, I, 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 I accept that. I accept that because I know if you start to do reports and feasibilities and work with every individual farmer, you know, we're talking months, maybe even longer than that, maybe years. But as expected, that was very controversial and still going on. Okay, um, as we tend to wrap up, by the way, with farming, I am very partial to agriculture. Although, personally, I've never been in agriculture myself, although I was associated with my father's factory, which processed agricultural goods. Maybe then I got my liking and appreciation for agriculture. But I really believe this country can do more with agriculture. And there are limitations in that happening because of the leadership at the top, quite frankly, and even the farmers themselves. A lot of them, you know, leave a lot to be desired in terms of the way they approach agriculture, especially in these modern times. I wrote an article, let me see that, that was July, before, before Maria, and suggested some of the things that are challenging right now, and, and that must be faced. And by the way, in one of my later articles, I said that no one less than the Prime Minister should take up the, agri the agriculture portfolio himself. Although he'd say, look, he's already overburdened with all sorts of portfolio. But if you're serious about developing agriculture in a serious way, let him, the man who knows how to get things done, as far as I'm concerned, and his position um, as Prime Minister, let him take charge more of the direction of, of agriculture. Some of the key things they have, they obviously have to do more to attract young people. There's no effort really being made really in attracting young farmers, except Mr. Scared himself every so often through various funding things, giving grants to small farmers, you know, um, just like that, um, in village groups and so on. That helps. But we've got to do more. We've got the significant things we need to do to help attract young people into agriculture. Again, my magazine, Link Magazine, had a couple of nice articles on that. Um, I think it was our last Christmas issue when we focused a bit on agriculture. Get your copy. Actually, that particular edition was so loud, we may have to get reprints. But um, again, the, the prevalence of the old farming methods, and of course a lot of old farmers. I was at a meeting with the IMF, and we were the ones pointing out at the meeting, not even our local people, but the foreigners, the IMF reps said, but you know the statistics show that you all have an it's problem in agriculture. Most of your farmers are elderly and old. What is being done to bring in young people? Not much was said on that. But they recognize the problem. Um, that is the IMF. There is ineffective disease management. St. Lucia had, one could argue, a bigger problem than us with Black Sigatoga, and, uh, and a bigger in terms of population. They were able to resolve the problem much more quicker and more successfully than us in Dominica. Why? Why? We got to ask ourselves that. We're still a high cost country when it comes to production. They say nothing tastes as good as Dominica fruit. And maybe that's the edge we have, that we still sell our things a little higher than everybody else and it can pass. But if we have to get more money into the farmers' hands, more money into all those associated with the industry, it has to become more efficient, more productive. Oh, production costs need to go down. Um, there is uncompetitive um, access to markets. That's been a perennial problem, proper access. And there's always constant talk about getting ships to assist <laughs> with <laughs> providing transportation to our key markets. That, for some reason, has never materialized. Um, 
then there is the terrain of course the terrain in Dominica is challenging it's good in sometimes bringing in a lot of rain which, which farmers need and so on but it is challenging we have to recognize that and how can we deal with that problem and of course the extremes of weather that we face in Dominica and especially now with climate change and that's why again I think our Prime Minister and the government was sympathetic to being fairly fairly um, what's the word? Fairly easygoing in the disbursement to farmers because it's been challenging for them Ch for the last few years. For the last been challenging. So he said, Look, let's close our eyes and give them something that they can get going back in it. But you know, even as I say so, I was struck by the fact that even while the Prime Minister from the beginning was talking about let the farmers get productive, look, the green is starting to appear and so on, let them get back in the farms and get going. The market stayed unopened because they hadn't cleaned out the place for about two or three months. That was ridiculous. You're trying to encourage the farmers to produce, at least for local consumption, and their proper access in terms of sales outlet is not being prepared. Again, bad planning. We don't seem to be serious when it comes to agriculture. That's my little two cents on the subject. Um, our final in conclusion to this program, and by the way, yeah, the shirt is a hot shirt, <laughs> in all respects. I should mention that a good friend of mine for the Thunderbirds band, the uh, regular band at carnival time, both t-shirts and costumes and so on, have won quite a few prizes. Um, he offered me, in fact, he provided me with a t-shirt of them, but um, I took the advice of my wife and said, if I wear a particular band's t-shirt, although it was an old t-shirt or more previous, it seems I'm showing a little bias towards one particular band. And I said, no, I wouldn't like to show that. I like to appear um, impartial in words and in action. So um, people will believe me when I say, I, I like to think I'm critical, I like to think I'm impartial and, and very fair in when I make assessments. Okay, finally, Link Magazine, look out for it. Um, this carnival, um, it's a, going to be a nice souvenir package. It's probably going to come at the end of the carnival deal. So we have all the winners and so on there. And of course, a lot about Hurricane Maria. Some super pictures included. It's really going to be a must-have edition, especially for you in the diaspora. Make sure you go back with at least two copies. One for your house and one to send that special friend you have overseas. Okay, Parabellot. Bidding you good day as we end this edition of Link Online.